Look at that. I'm not grabbing it, but we could definitely look at it. So we'll probably only leave the trap for an hour, maybe two hours. Ooh, that looks good. See that pocket right there? That looks really good. Oh my, dude, look at all the bait by the trap. What is going on? Right now, we gotta try to get as much bait as we can. It's pretty windy out right now. Conditions aren't the best, but we're gonna see what we can do here. Gotta get some bait for this fish trap. Never use fresh live bait. I've always used frozen bait, so maybe that switches things up. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Anything? Oh yeah, we got some stuff. We got some stuff. A little perch, exactly what we were looking for. Let's bring it on the sand here. Let's see exactly what we got. Oh my, whole bunch of little baby perch. Like, really, literally micro. Little baby sand perch, a little smaller than we're looking for, but we'll see if we can get some bigger ones. Need like a, I'd say I'm looking for like a two inch size bait, just because we gotta be able to make sure it doesn't get out of the holes of the fish trap. So we need some good size baits here. Little crabs, well that's a big crab. That's not a little crap. Ah. Whew. Oh my gosh, whole bunch of sand perch. Okay. All right, we got a whole bunch of sand perch in here. Can't really see the size, but that's what I was talking about right there though. About two inches, we got three of them that size, and that will work perfect. Fresh live bait. If we can get another like four more big boys, I think we'll be set. Oh, what the? What the heck? Oh, he just got a... He literally just murked a sand perch. One of the ones, I guess, was just floating. Seagulls are no joke. You gotta watch those things. Let's go in this pocket right here. Deep pocket, usually there's a ton of bait and stuff like that. Let that sucker sink. I think bigger ones too. Yep. Watch this, oh my gosh. There are literally so many baby sand perch. Dude, little baby mullet. Micro mullet, micro micro mullet. That, I think that would be pretty cool to come back and get these guys. Get them back in the water. I would say one, two, three, four, five big boys, and then a bunch of like smaller ones, which I think we'll be able to get out of the holes of the fish trap. So we need baits that are gonna obviously stay in there, be able to stay in there and not drift out. And I think the big boys will be able to do that. And we only need a couple for the time the trap's gonna be there. I mean probably keep it there for three hours and that's plenty of bait for that so should be set to go are you looking at that look at that I'm not grabbing it but we could definitely look at it give me like a leaf dude it's literally crawling on the bottom of the floor right now because I don't know if this thing's poisonous so I'm definitely not just gonna pick it up don't know what that is but probably not gonna mess with them anymore don't want to get stung or something but if you guys may know what that is, comment down below and let us know. Cause that is crazy. Oh no, it's a low tide. You literally just see them like mid-water column just sitting there. But the conditions we're working with right now are not the best, so I don't think we're gonna be seeing them. What the? Mullet. All right, well, I say we're good on bait. We just go to the that spot, put them in the trap. Yo, hey, are you kidding me? That dang thing came back and uh, ate my fish. Dude, dude, he got every single one. He got every single one. Every single big one in there. Are you kidding me? Yeah, you. Look, there's a, an iguana behind him, but yeah, you. Yeah, come back here. I'm gonna have a nice little word with you. That's like the 10th time you've done this to me. I don't know if you guys remember, but that same bird, every time the baby ostrich eats my bait and I have to go back and cast them more. So let's go catch some more bait real quick, real quick. I think I got some. I need big boys though. I need big boys. Oh, oh, the crap. <laughs> that is great bait, so we're definitely actually gonna take this blue crab. There he is, little blue crab. Yeah, you use him for bait. Got a couple big boys too, so I'll add the biggest ones in there, release the rest. 
So we got mullet right there on that cast, which is literally one of the best bait fish. And we got two of them to be exact. So I think we're good and we're set. And that honestly just made the trap 10 times better. We got a bucket full of bait right here. We got our fish trap right here. And I decided to go with the metal fish trap just because this thing, you can never go wrong with it. It absolutely destroys. This is probably one of the best fish traps we have. So we're using this one, catches almost anything. I've caught eels, octopus, and vertebrates, a bunch of exotic fish. So should have a good chance with that. And for bait, we got two finger mullet and a whole bunch of live sand perch. Like I said, I've never used live bait in a fish trap. So I don't know if it just being fresher and a lot more smellier, that will make a difference. The fact that it's live should make a big difference, but we're gonna see, we're gonna test it all out today and see if we can catch anything. So all these mangroves, you can see it's really low tide right now. So all this is eventually gonna rise up. I would say we're at like the end of low tide. So from here on out, it's just gonna get a little lower and then slowly rise back up until all this is covered. So we'll probably only leave the trap for an hour, maybe two hours to we'll check on it. And then if there's nothing in it, we'll leave it for another hour. But this is the spot we're gonna be placing it. This is all great for fish, eels, octopus, just because there's tons of structure and that's what we're looking for. So we're gonna get the bait in there and then kind of walk through here and, and find a good spot to place the trap. That is a live mullet. I mean, literally anything that sees that, smells that is going in the trap. I'm gonna do one big mullet and then the rest, we're just gonna do a bunch of little sand perch. So if anything smaller wants to go in that trap, they can. We got four sand perch in there and one giant mullet. Let's go. Be careful, a lot of big land crabs back here. Ooh, that looks good. See that pocket right there? That looks really good. Any pockets usually that go like from like two feet to a drop off usually hold fish. So we'll probably place it right there in that pocket. It looks like there's a good drop off right there. Look at that. For sure, dude, you got like a little creek. There's definitely stuff hanging up in those mangroves for sure. Lobsters, that should work. I literally have it placed in like this little creek. So anything that swims through here is definitely gonna smell that scent from the trap and then follow that scent hopefully right into the trap. So we'll let this sit, then check on it in about an hour. Tie this bad boy up to the tree and we're set to go. One hour later guys, we're gonna give it a little update on the trap, check it, see if anything may be in it. And if there is, Ooh, it's definitely got lower for sure. Look at all the mud crabs out. Before that was like pretty much all covered. I don't even remember how we got back here. Trap still there. I just like don't know. Oh my dude, look at all the bait by the trap. What is going on? What is going on? Why are they right here? Oh no, they are loaded throughout this whole thing. Is that an eel? An eel! We got an eel! We got an eel! We got an eel! Let's go! Dude, he, he ate that whole mullet! He ate the whole mullet! Oh my gosh, look at that. Right there is a golden tail moray eel. These guys are pretty common here in Jupiter. This is a big one, and you can see he's got some really, really pretty colors, but we're gonna get him in this bucket. That's, dude, literally in an hour. In an hour, that is probably one of the shortest times I've ever left the trap out and got something, but I honestly think something with the live fish had a lot to do with it, so that is awesome. Should we bring him back for the pond? I wasn't expecting an eel, but I don't have one of these guys, so maybe we should. Now we have caught in a good amount of eels in traps. This is actually my second golden moray. This is a big boy for sure. Boom, right in there, and we'll get an aerator set up on him probably have about a 20 minute drive home and then he's going in the pond so we'll see you guys back at the house we are back at the quarantine pond we got our big old golden tail moray eel right here I'm trying to get him out here so you guys can get a good look on him but without him biting me but look at the colors on that eel so pretty he's been acclimating for about 20 minutes so he should be set to go that water feels about the same actually identical so yeah, he's good to go. We'll get this aerator off, get this drip line off and get him in. Now I did decide to put him in the quarantine pond just so we can keep an eye on him the first couple of days, just to make sure he's free of parasites and any diseases. And if so, then he will be going into the main pond. Any wild creatures or fish we do catch, 
We are gonna start quarantining before we put in the pond just because we had that problem last time and we don't wanna have that again, but oh my gosh, I got them in my hands. Look at that. My hands are wet, by the way, so we're not taking off any slime coat and right into the pond he goes. And you can see right in that corner, and he should swim right into those rocks. I set him up a little structure right there. He's going right in just so he's comfortable the time of him being in here. And we'll probably keep an eye on him for a week or two just to make sure, like I said, he's free of any parasites, diseases before adding him into the main system with all the other eels and fish. So if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. We went out there, we switched it up a little bit today using live bait as our bait for the fish trap. And we ended up catching a big old deal. So I definitely think that helped the outcome of our fish trap. I've never used live bait before. And the first time we did, we ended up catching a huge golden tail more eel. So he will be in here temporarily for about two weeks. Then we will move him over to the bigger pond. So make sure you guys are subscribed so you don't miss out on that. But with that being said, we'll see y'all in the next one. See y'all!